I'm having such a good time already. <laughs> <laughs> yes, 2019, there is a Santa Claus. And I know this. Imagine my surprise when a mirage turned into a reality with just our timer. Stephanie, would you mind giving us an example of your holiday spirit by giving us Santa's symbol of a red light? A gold <laughs> light? And the evergreen green light. Yes. <laughs> Miracles. I don't know what that has to do with the speech. Why, why would the lights come in with what she's trying to say? I'm hoping that you're directing that at me, and I appreciate that so much. Thank you so much for bringing that up. What that has to do with is the magic of Christmas, and I know from you and your speeches that you've given to this club in, it, in the past, you're excited about when a dog comes and runs up to you and gives you a kiss. You know where does that kiss come from? It comes from God. It comes from the universe. It comes from even a tree. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for giving up for a Thank you so much. In fact, I'm so excited. Please pass her a smarty. <laughs> wow. Just a spot on. I'm just so excited about that. Yes, there is a Santa Claus. We live in times right now that we have always lived in. Every single time in our human Wait, wait, wait a minute. I've studied this quite a bit, and I don't think we're in the same time zone as in the past. No, it can't <laughs> and, and, and elaborate. Please elaborate, Greg, because I'm going to address that soon. All right, it's just things have changed a lot lately, and I'm not sure Santa Claus is still up to it. Specifically, specifically, give me a point. Give me a point. A political point, if you will. Something big, something delicious, something not, something Grinchish, if you will. <laughs> Just looking at the top of our government, I think, says enough. Is he talking about the president? Do you think, if you think he's talking about our president, raise your hand. He's talking about our president. So this time period of our president is the worst ever, yes? Santa can't possibly exist because our president now is a stinker beyond belief and we despise him. Is that not correct? Now when did you stop believing in Santa? Because I interviewed you earlier and you believed in not only Santa but the Tooth Fairy as well. <laughs> I don't remember. You don't remember? <laughs> no. Did it have anything to do with our current president? Probably not. So it was before <laughs> him, possibly another president earlier, that destroyed your faith. <laughs> <laughs> Is that true? It must be. Oh, <laughs> it must have <been> smarty. <laughs> I'm so glad he did. I want to introduce you to some of our past presidents. They provided a couple of problems for us. Let's talk about, I don't know, Grover Cleveland, for example. <laughs> Let's talk about Grover. Grover developed what the world knew as Sin City in the United States. Well, we, we already forgave Thomas Jefferson for his shenanigans and several other presidents that had illegitimate children with their slaves because, well, they were slaves and that's how people took it then and I apologize for that now, but it, it wasn't as horrible a deal then as it is now, as we certainly understand it to be. But Grover, Grover didn't marry. He came into the presidency as, as a bachelor, but he was a bachelor with a past. He had an illegitimate child. And not only did he have this illegitimate child, he took the mother of the illegitimate child, had her put in the insane asylum, and took the child away, gave her 500 bucks, had her sign off on the kid. Oh yeah, had her sign off on the child. Are we loving Grover? Are we loving Grover? Because his title coming to the presidency was was good Grover. There's a fine man. I don't know what's going on. 
Honey, you need to make a drug deal. I got a phone. <laughs> <laughs> Here you go. Here you go. Here you go. Here you go. I don't go outside. Go, go, go on. <laughs> you know a girl's got to work. <laughs> girl's got to work. I, I appreciate it. This gal marries Grover Cleveland. That's why he has the illegitimate child and he comes into the presidency as a bachelor. Because... He fell in love with her earlier. Now, why didn't he marry her? He didn't marry her because she was 11. <laughs> yeah, she was 11 years old. So, Gro good Grover, because that's how he's known in the presidency, as I earlier stated. Could you pass me my, my cell phone back? Oh, yes. Thank you know, so I have much. my own drug deals to make things. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I appreciate it. And pass oh, her. To be confiscated. And pass her a smarty. <laughs> and pass her a smarty. Thank you, Stephanie for keeping our economy going. <laughs> <laughs> she does not marry the president because she's only 11. But he waits for her till she turns 21, and they do marry in the White House. So that, she's the youngest still, to this day, first lady. Now, what's going on at the time, because this is the worst of times, as Greg has pointed out. Greg has pointed out. Worst of times right now. But back then, during Grover and the other presidents during their Rutherford, Rutherford B. Hayes, the rich and the poor were having such deals over tariffs. Anybody have problems with tariffs now? A <laughs> few. <laughs> but they had it then, too. So after the Spanish-American war, war is over, the anarchy that's developed, this was a, a cartoon for Mr. Cleveland that was going on in the day. We also had the Chicago labor rally bombing. Remember that? Oh, well, of course not, because that was in the past. Was in, and we forget the past, don't we? That's right. History repeats itself. Nothing going on today, nothing going on today has not already occurred in the past. Nothing. What saves us time and time again? One word. Santa! <laughs> and this is words from a young woman who stopped believing in Santa at about the age of six. But she, her father was so sweet and wonderful, and he continued with surprising her that she kept it to herself. This is the God's honest truth. This is the Santa universe truth. Yeah. Say hallelujah. 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 For Carrie, who kept her father. Now, that's the spirit of Christmas. And he that's turned out to be such a jerk, though. Gosh. Who, Dad? Yeah. Oh, no. What happened with Dad? Do oh, tell. Well, you know, I mean, when they got divorced, we celebrated, not cried. <laughs> <laughs> so you had divorce. Oh, uh, we were happy, though. You were happy. Yeah. You were we happy. needed to get rid of him. So th what happened the next Christmas? Oh, did Christmas stop? Oh no, I got a boom box. <laughs> that was so cool. Boom box. <laughs> Rick Springfield <laughs> on my boom box. So the joy continued. Yeah. Something terrible happened to Carrie, and life did not stop as we know it. It continued. So no matter how terrible a time in your family, or in your nation, somehow something magical occurs and things can happen. And things can happen. Virginia, in 1897, was feeling all the drama of her time with bombings and tariffs and war, you name it going on. The president being, well, not quite the president that they'd hoped for. But Mr. Cleveland, let's get back to him for a second, because you know, I'm a historian, I get excited about these things. Mr. Cleveland was such a stinker in his private life that when he was voted out as president, after his four-year term, they bring him back two years later. He's the only president to serve two non-consecutive terms. Good Grover. <laughs> Woo! And they were serious about it. He was a fine man, except for... Well, except for what we already know about. But Virginia's father cannot convince her that there's no Santa. And he doesn't want to fit to her. So he tells Virginia, 
If it's written in the sun, it is so. Oh, so many <coughs> religions believe in the sun. But this was a, a strange, magical time where people believed in their newspapers <laughs> and in their media. They did. They believed so much that he told his, his daughter, if it's written in the sun, then it's true. So she writes to the Sun newspaper, my little friends all say there is no sound. My father asked me to write to you, and he said, if it's written in the sun, it is so. Francis Church anonymously writes back. He does not sign his name. He leaves it open. He writes back, your little friends are wrong. Hmm. Your little friends are wrong. There is a Santa, Virginia. Just as much as there is a Virginia. I did not believe in Virginia till you wrote me, Virginia. Think about that. Think about that. Mr. Church writes back anonymously to let Virginia and the world know no article has been printed more often or spread around the world more than this letter confirming that there is indeed a set clause. The sun went on. I hope you do Google and get this letter, or I'll send it to you if you ask me to. Uh, if you don't, you will end up on the naughty list. I have lots of these. So if you, that's right. I mean, nobody wants to end up on the naughty Who wants to end up on the naughty list? I mean, really. I mean, you might joke about it, go, oh yeah, I would be in the naughty list. No, you don't. <laughs> no, you don't. You want something for Christmas. You want something under the tree. But what Virginia wanted was confirmation. Virginia wanted to know, yes, indeed, there is a Santa Claus. And he goes on to tell her that if you stop believing in Santa Claus, you might as well stop believing in fairies. They're everywhere. Tom's family, Tom right here, his family did not have a big Christmas celebration, did you? There, there, that wasn't going on in your world. But his father was an aviator, right? His father did not believe in Santa, but he believed in the power of something else. What was that little guy's name? The gremlin that moved the bridges? Exactly. Shish Gabubich. Shish Gabubich. <laughs> Shish Gabubich helped save his father's life. I'm telling you, there are magical creatures around protecting us, keeping us safe. Fred and his brother believed until they were four or five. I'm not sure what went on at that point in time, but they believed. Tatiana's family believed in fairies. Tatiana was not so, so big into it, but, <laughs> but look at that face, that happy, happy smile that she's got going on. <laughs> Sweeten her up with two of these. <laughs> Little smarty in his sweet. <coughs> Get that smile going. Because magically, even though you don't believe in Santa Claus, look what you got today. <laughs> That's what the club, as per my research, believe as a group until about the age of seven. I, I asked most of you, and most of you got back to me, so I do appreciate that. Believe in Santa Claus and the Tooth Fairy. Big time. A little iffy on the Easter Bunny, but 100% of the people that I talk to believe in some form of creature under the bed. <laughs> <laughs> what that indicates is all of the terrible things that are going on in our world filter down into the children <coughs> in the form of fear. So while our parents might not tell us there's joy, there's fairies, there's magic, there's Santa, they do let us be afraid of the dark and the unknown. Or isn't that a pill? Think about that, parents. Do your kids believe 
and creatures under the bed going to grab them by the foot. They're afraid to leave that foot out still to this day, like Allison. She keeps her foot inside her cover, for goodness sake. Today! <laughs> Believe in Santa instead. Believe in the goodness and the possibilities and the fact that something is waiting for you. Something is there for you. And what a marvelous audience. We've got drug deals done. We've clarified a few things. Look, at, I'm so excited. Nobody made the naughty list. And I appreciate this day. Santa lives. And he lives forever a thousand years from now. Virginia, nay, ten times ten thousand years from now. He will continue to make glad the heart of childhood.